Okay, next company. From Boston, Massachusetts, we have AppMap. Presenting for AppMap is Elizabeth Lawler, co-founder and CEO. Give them a round of applause. Developers are the engine of growth and innovation, building the products we all rely on. But developers spend half their week in toil. Toil is the tedious work in software creation that arises from complexity. Toil robs 25 million developers of the joy of coding. Over 80 million developer hours are being wasted just today in toil. This costs businesses over $85 billion per year in wasted effort. Developers report that toil makes them unhappy, and unhappy developers quit at one of the highest rates of any industry, costing businesses heavily. Companies spend billions on observability, production monitoring, and security testing to find problems in code. Developers toil in mountains of data, looking for information to fix performance issues, remediate security flaws, and rework broken code. Developers are lost in a maze of tools they don't control, away from the coding they love to do. Developers, if you are lost in toil, you need a map. We built app maps so software developers can see the behavior of their software as they write code. App map delivers personal observability, performance, and security analysis to developers when they work to reduce toil. And app map is in the tool developers love the most, their code editor. Go to demo. This is an app map. App maps are accurate, up-to-date, runtime information about the behavior of software as it is at any moment for any environment. The latest version of code in production, in a pull request, and even in the uncommitted changes developers are working on. Develop App map traces software execution wherever it goes, even into the data stores and across service boundaries. For the first time ever, developers can see the behavior of their software as they write code. AppMap is real code execution, not a static code analysis. AppMap streams code behavior data right to the code editor. This is a list of AppMaps, one for each request made to my app. AppMap automatically analyzes this information to find issues why developers work, and it alerts them if it finds a problem. In this, in this application, it's found two issues, a performance issue and a security flaw. First, the performance issue. A query is repeated many times in a loop. This will cause a slowdown in production. Over half of today's performance issues are code related like this, and no other tool can find them in the code editor. The second is a security issue. The user is authorized before they are authenticated. Broken access control is the number one security issue in the OS top 10, and no other tool can find it. These are just two examples of the kinds of analyses that AppMap can provide while developers work. There are dozens more. Back to slides. We built AppMap from the ground up to meet the needs of developers. We started with data, purpose built for personal observability. AppMap integrates deeply with popular languages and frameworks, and AppMap is open source to integrate with new languages and new communities. Companies adopting personal observability have faster time to code onboarding and reduce Mean time to repair flaws from weeks down to minutes. App maps are shareable for collaboration, and App Map reports on fixes so organizations can track software improvement. Tens of thousands of developers have adopted App Map for personal observability in their code editor, from Fortune 50 companies to the Global 1000s, startups, and coding schools. App Map has five star ratings in the VS Code and JetBrains marketplaces. Postman partnered with AppMap for their community of 6 million developers. AppMap generates open API data in the code editor and syncs it automatically with Postman collections. This is just one example of how runtime data in the code editor can accelerate adoption of developer tools from inside the code editor. AppMap is the only tool to shift dynamic security analysis and performance, and, and performance analysis all the way left into the code editor. 
Delivering the developer observability experience is a massive market opportunity to disrupt incumbents in the dynamic application security testing space and the application performance monitoring space. But we believe there's a big opportunity ahead to facilitate the adoption of the $40 billion of developer tools that are, are from inside the code editor with runtime run insights. Developers. AppMap is free for individuals, students, and, and open source projects from the VS Code and JetBrains marketplaces. Join us. AppMap helps development teams reduce toil and, and ship more performant, secure, and reliable code faster. And for developer-focused organizations, let AppMap help you deliver more value to your users. Partner with AppMap. Thank you. So, I have to start with David. David was nodding along the entire time. I just wanted to look like I understood <laughs> everything. <laughs> Me too. Um, I do. Congratulations and, and great job. I guess, you know, you're changing behavior. Developers have grown up with static analysis. You're moving towards dynamic analysis. We talk, uh, and it's sort of a repeat of the, the last question, but around education of your end user. How much does your company need to teach a new behavior to cause the adoption of that? And obviously the value of your product should sort of speak for itself, but developers historically have been slower to change behavior than um, at times. Well, you know, that's a very interesting question because we actually approached developing the product from the maps first. So offering developers a window into how software behaves actually allowed us to surface the issue of dynamic application security testing and the application for performance analysis. So what's very interesting is when you offer developers the opportunity to see or get insights or align more easily in their code editor, you don't actually have to you can kind of drag them along to the commercial opportunity. Rich? Yeah, can I just ask, in order to succeed, do you have to, are you complementary to the existing IDEs and sort of CI CD tools out there, or do you ultimately aspire to replace, you know, the sort of the incumbent or older tools? Congrats yes, the I, I think AppMap is actually going to be a great partner for a lot of existing tools. For example, um, uh, developers who use AppMap also use Datadog and Splunk. And that allows us to bring a different kind of contextual information to some of the issues that they see in those types of other tools. Do you think, just as a follow-up, you have similar congrats on the Postman partnership. That's, mm -hmm. that's a smart way to distribute. Do you think you'll ultimately continue to distribute through other forms of BD partnerships like that, or is it better to sort of go direct you know, around and have direct contact, perhaps, with the users? When, when we look at the market opportunity, I think there's an opportunity for AppMap to compete you know, directly in the software quality analysis market, similar to tools like Sneak or SonarCube. But I think the big market opportunity is what you've highlighted just there, which is that there are 10,000 companies that have APIs and SDKs and other tools that are consumed by developers. That last mile of developer experience is inside the code editor and being able to support that customer success for them by providing runtime insights and IDE integration is, I think that's the big market opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Follow-up question, and uh, by the way, congratulations, and also the, we're big fans of this kind of developer-led growth model, and uh, so it's very smart. Uh, but most of these companies who are developer-adopted first have to figure out monetization, right, to, to build a scale business. So how do you think about the kind of the evolution to getting paid? Um, what kind of features will cause people to pay you, and whose budget will it come out of? I think that's a great question. So as you know, developer-led growth, you really want to figure out how you can become the de facto standard, the lingua franca of the type of uh, value you want to deliver to developers. So we did go with an open source freemium model to begin with. But as we were working with our developer community of, of 25,000 developers, we were able to surface what some of the higher order issues were. So for example, architects were doing hand reviews of, of maps to find N plus one queries and things like this. And those things are very, they're very interested in paying for those types of services. So analytic services, reporting, sharing. One of the things that, um, that uh, uh, leadership reports doing is taking these app maps in order to go get more resources to describe the technical debt and, um, and software flaws that are resonant in there. And does it need to rise up to like the boss of the developers? Because that's the person who has the budget, right? Indeed. Individual developers may not have budget. Mm -hmm. And in that case, does it go to come from the DevOps budget or did it come BPEs, from BPEs, DevOps, managers, um, uh, managers of large development teams? Okay. Great. We'll go to Mar and then Jim. 
Good job, Elizabeth. I have a question regarding the 25,000 developers that are using this. I don't know if you can give us some numbers, maybe even like what type of developers are using it, do you, what adoption are people, do they try it and then they keep it? Do they bring it into their companies? Like what sort of, maybe a color on the 25,000? Yes, so the 25,000 developers who've installed come from reports from the VS Code and JetBrains marketplaces. So that's net of churn. So um, that's the number of installed uh, users today. We've had over, Four, five, well, 500,000 installations of our libraries. Those are the pieces of code that you insert into your code so you can generate these this type of runtime data. So you can see that they've in, you know, developers are investing in spending more time integrating it to larger parts of their code base. Um, yes, definitely teams. Uh, we work with teams of developers as well um, who've reported that they use it uh, across their entire team. Okay. And then in terms of, uh, I think you might have mentioned about uh, utilization. Um, but it's mostly personal. You're, I think you mentioned in the presentation that it was for personal observability. Yes. I mean, it is for personal observability, and that's where we started. Yeah. But now we have a SaaS offering that okay. offers this sharing feature, which allows people to embed app maps in pull requests, in Jira tickets, Got et cetera. It. And then the reporting, which is a, which really much more of a, man, managerial, uh, a managerial interest. Are people already using reporting? Or? Yes, they are. Uh, okay. We have 30 design partners who, are, um, who are, have worked with us to develop this solution. It might be worth mentioning that it was here two days ago when we announced the availability of the runtime analysis feature. Yeah. So that's, that's brand new, and that's really taking a step more down the commercialization yeah, path. It's um, before that, it's really been for individuals, and we see people from all walks, from, from Google and Meta to coding schools, like the whole okay. yeah. spectrum. What about um, privacy? So you're getting a lot of data. So what are you guys doing on the back end security-wise? So actually, that's part of the real deep innovation here, which is that the data can be uh, locally generated and locally stored. So for example, we had 3,000 new users <laughs> sign up and start adopting App Map since we were on the TechCrunch stage two, years, two days ago. So uh, we didn't have to worry about scaling the back end because all of that data is local. Hmm. Matthew, as you're writing, I'm, I'm a very good waiter too. Um, yeah, but I guess uh, uh, just a little follow on to David's thing. I mean, developers are creatures of habit. Um, I think that it is in a corporate environment uh, to go along with the security and privacy scenario. Here you may convince an individual developer, I'm going to try this cool tool. This is awesome, right? But uh, bring, BYOD is not necessarily welcome in a coding environment. And so like, what do you view, your, what's your tool that you're utilizing to take that from this developer thinks it's awesome to convincing that their, their boss that they need to convince their security team to, I mean, I'm speaking, the paranoids are incredibly paranoid at Yahoo. They, they're very intense. <laughs> yes. You know, they take, uh, they take their time, uh, and that's a good thing, right, for corporate security. So how do you make it through that path to the sales uh, department? So from an adoption perspective, I think that's a great question. Going through the VS Code and JetBrains marketplaces actually allows us to get access because those marketplaces are part of the VS Code and JetBrains installations that are local inside of these corporations. So for example, if um, uh, Meta is using VS Code extensions in the marketplace, a developer there can actually adopt it, and it will already have been pre-vetted through their security team. And I think it's a really kind of clever way for us to avoid a lot of those early conversations that would have otherwise stifled us. Um, from a, uh, an adoption perspective and education perspective, as I mentioned, these libraries are embedded in the code base. So any new developer who comes who wants to try it or look at it, it's already running. You know, it's already in there. They just have to actually add the extension and all of a sudden all of this will just <laughs> pop up. And it tends to spread that way. Someone will have a pull request or a ticket or is discussing a project, and they, they'll bring up an app map. And, oh, where did, you know, where did you get that? But I agree with you. The, the data residency uh, issue is, was severe. And in fact, it caused a change in our strategy early on to go with a code editor extension rather than trying to host data ourselves. And all the code that um, might touch the customer system, whether it's CI or the code editor, is licensed under open source. So that really helps because they do all, you know, scan and check what they, what they bring in. And that's not, you know, 100% of the solution, but it, it certainly helps. Thank you. Could I just ask what your the early team's personal backgrounds were and how did you decide to focus on this problem? And so this is a, we're a repeat team of founders who build developer tools. Um, the last project we built was in the cybersecurity space. It was privileged account security for open source, uh, for DevOps tools. We competed with HashiCorp Vault. Uh -huh. um, and prior to that, um, my background is at a, as a statistical 
com uh, computing person. I have a doctorate in st uh, data science and taught statistical computing for 10 years. Congratulations on awesome. the progress. Thank you. Great. Thank you very well much. Give them a round of applause.